What's up guys? Welcome to episode number two for Welcome to the Grind. Uh, personal trainer here, Jairo Morales. Uh, today we're going to be interviewing Coach Zach. He's a movement specialist. He's actually one of the master instructors for FRC, which is called Functional Range Conditioning. Kind of a new trend. Um, it's fantastic. It's kind of mixing between physical therapy kind of with actual working out. Um, and he teaches multiple classes here in Miami uh, called Ken Stretch, basically implementing the FRC principles into a class setting. Um, I was able to attend one of his classes in Miami, <clears throat> also here in New York. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this. You're gonna, definitely going to enjoy the view because the, the, the view of the, of the beach is amazing. Okay? Enjoy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh... This is Hyro, personal trainer here for Welcome to Grind. I'm here with Coach Zach. What's up, guys? Um, on beautiful South Beach. You can obviously tell the beautiful view in the background. Uh, so I got a chance to try his class uh, yesterday. Was it yesterday? Yes. It was yesterday, yeah. Uh, great FRC class. Well, it's classified as Ken Stretch, right? Ken Stretch, right? It's not FRC. What's the yeah. difference between FRC? So FRC is basically just like the background system, kind of the science behind it. It's like okay. the first course, and then Ken Stretch is just the class based on it. So it's just kind of the group system based around the FRC. Okay. Explain, explain that again. So like the FRC is so like... The FRC is a seminar, so it's a course where okay. basically you go and you learn about the individual drills, about the science behind it, you know, about kind of why each is important, about all of that. And then the, the um, kids are one -on coaching, basically it breaks you up into like one on one, so it's more for that individual personal trainer and therapist. Okay. And then kids stretches is for the instructor looking to teach classes. So it's specifically how to use everything from FRC in groups. I got you. Okay, so it's like uh, you're applying the principles that you learn in the course, in the FRC setting. course, yeah. in a group setting right. with it. some type of organization of right. some goal in mind. Yeah. Right. Okay, so where, where, are you, where are you from, man? So I'm from Baltimore. Okay. Uh, I went to school in Delaware with my girlfriend. She's in North Jersey. Okay. I followed her up to New York when I graduated. Okay. Did five years in New York grind and then convinced her finally to run away to Miami with me. It took a little while, but now we're down here. I've been down here. Damn New Yorkers, man. You guys always, they all leave to Miami because you want the sun. Nice, you know you want to. <laughs> it's the winters, man. The winters were tough. But uh been down here since February and loving it. Wow, you've only been down here since February? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh so my long. God, okay, I thought yeah, it was, yeah. for some reason, I thought it was longer. No, no. Okay, okay so so what's what's your background, man? So you're obviously doing the, the Ken Stretch thing now, but like, what did you start? Did you start like in yoga or you massage therapy? So, no, actually, I started playing sports. I played lacrosse growing up, mainly. I played a lot of sports growing up, and by 21, I was beat up. Bad shoulder, bad hip, and I was personal training at an Equinox in New York, and I was limping at like 22. And okay. I just remember thinking like, what am I doing? You know, I'm like fit, I'm strong, I can deadlift a lot, I can run fast, but, I, but I'm limping. Okay. You know, and I started thinking about like fitness and kind of what does that actually mean if I'm in pain when I trip on the sidewalk. You know, so I started to look at options where it's like, all right, what can I do where, you know, I'm still training for strength, I'm still doing kind of the things I enjoy, but at the same time, it's for that weird time when I run and I step off the curb. And those little things that aches and pains that when I was 16, it was fine. And now all of a sudden it's like, oh man, I've been limping for two weeks since I sprained my toe in the um, And that led me to kind of like Edo Portal and I found movement culture and some of that stuff. And I dove into kind of trying to do in like one arm handstands, you know, thought I was going to be the next gymnastics <laughs> superstar. <laughs> Tweaked my shoulder again. And then I was like, all right, body weight's a step away from kind of the Olympic lifting and the stuff I've been doing before, but yeah. I got, there's still something before that. And then I found FRC, which is kind of joint mobility focus first, kind of the importance of the joints being healthy and then focus on the movements. So I got into that and then yeah. dove in the rabbit hole. That was 2014. So okay. since then I've been kind of FRC and pin stretch. Okay, but you're right still there. doing the uh, personal training? A I do bit? a little bit of personal training. It's mostly mobility work now though. Uh, okay, it's so kind of what I came down here to do is train road in the area. Okay. When I was in New York, it's pretty When I was in New York, it's kind of like already caught on. This is what you get when you film outside. Miami, man. Give us a second, um, guys. But in New York, it already kind of caught on, so FRC and Kinship have already adopted, and you know, a lot of clients, and you know, people are already pursuing it. And then moving down here, it's kind of trying to bring it to Miami and South Florida. And there, you know, there's a gym in Fort Lauderdale, there's a couple in Tampa, but not really any FRC and Kinship real focus here. Okay. Um, so so that's part of it, is trying so to grassroots it a little bit. Okay, so you're actually, wow, so you're trying to pioneer it down here in Miami. A little bit, a little yeah. bit, trying to be kind of, you know, Kinship Miami. 
Yeah, we'll search for Miami. There you go. There you go. Hashtag good search Miami. There we go. Look at that. I got like nine <laughs> posts on there. Like <laughs> Slowly growing. Slowly. Uh, I'm I'm running into the same issue. Like what kind of what you did? Because you know I, I like you know I do jujitsu and I and I kind of try to couple like lifting with jujitsu because I feel like the lifting minimizes my risk of injury to some aspects. The only problem is is I had to change because I come from the old school way of bodybuilding. Right which bodybuilding is counterproductive for jiu-jitsu because it it's puts like too much, time. yeah, well, it puts too much, uh, it taxes the muscle so much that your muscle is already kind of worn out that when you actually do jiu-jitsu, you increase the risk of getting hurt. And I actually got hurt. I, I like, I have like a, like a partial part of my pec that got torn yeah. and it was just because I was sore right. and someone was doing an arm bar on me and made like a funky movement. And I made a funky movement, and I was like this for like I thought I literally ripped my pec off my yeah, chest. Yeah, not a yeah, it was it was not completely scary. Yeah. And so now I'm also getting older now too, and I'm noticing like I've gotten into yoga recently, and what attracted me to one you and also the whole FRC kind of program guidance thing, which I'm gonna probably do the certification myself, is because I feel like like even though I'm able to move, like my actual joint mobility is like limited. Like I right. have like limited scapular movement which yeah. inhibits me from being oh, yeah, able to do sure. like proper shoulder presses for sure. yeah. um, and you don't realize it as you get older it's like you make like small like little tiny sacrifices you know year after year and you get tighter and tighter and tighter over over the time span right um, which is what's attracted to me but uh, so far what you're doing right um, what else? Uh, so, what, what's your actual background like? What's your background like? Where are you from? Like na nationality? Like, where are your parents from? So, my family's from from the U.S. Uh, initially, if you go back a couple of generations, family in Israel and family in Russia. So okay. Kind of Eastern European, okay. made our way over wow, here. You're like a few generations American, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right, yeah. You know, you don't run into that too often. Yeah. <laughs> you know, our first generation Colombian, yeah, yeah. famous over here, is first generation Haitian. Um, <laughs> For you, that's it's odd to be uh, yeah, to get to be. Well, coming out of Miami, it's a little bit different. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my family's born and raised in Baltimore, kind of boring. Just East Coast, man. Crabs, lots of crabs, shrimp. <laughs> so what would what, what? So you couple the the FRC stuff like like I do it as a warm up now. So like so some for of me it definitely depends. You know you can do it as its own training. You can do it as an easy filler. Like the easiest way when people started like, hey, how do I fit this stuff in? I'm lifting weights, you know, five days a week. I'm, I'm training for this. I've got a competition here. To me, it's look. I've got an upper body lift. We do lower body mobility simple um you know you can build it in that way i think yeah that's how you couple it like that i i try to keep it simple for people in the beginning i think that's a simple way another easy way is you know you have your strength day your cardio day on okay. your cardio day get your mobility in afterwards you already have your heart rate up yeah, and then you're just getting an bit. added kind of cardiovascular benefit um but as far as you know yeah definitely building it into a warm-up and a cool down trying to get a few reps here and there throughout the day kind of break up the time sitting or those kind of, you know the biggest thing, though, I think in the beginning is trying to establish habits and getting in the habit of, all right, these are the type of movements I know I need to work on. Right. When can I fit it? Yeah, I, I do like for, for me, the way I've been kind of ingraining it is I do it before my Olympic lifts. Yeah. So like I'm at the point now where because of all the do all the movement with jujitsu, I, I basically do four lifts. I do squat, deadlift, overhead press and bench. Yeah. And I do that three times a week. Yeah. But simple. I do like, it's real simple. I yeah. do it three times a week. I do, uh, well, I'm at, I, I, I built it up over like the last nine months. Right. But I do it where it's um, uh, like one to five reps, depending okay. on the week. Okay. And it's just for like neuromuscular recruitment so that it's not too taxing on the muscle. A lot, a lot of, a lot yeah, of tension yeah. on the tendon. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for like you then, like what I would recommend is really prioritizing rotational movements. So as a jiu-jitsu guy, you know, you need a ton of shoulder and hip rotation. Right. Shoulder preventative, if you get caught in that arm bar or something, you know, right. put in an Americana or something like that. Yeah. Hip, same idea. Yeah. Um, building strength through lifts is great. You know, having a strong core and glutes, having strong shoulders. But to me, it's, you know, jiu-jitsu, I'm a little tax rotation and stuff's getting a lot of work. Right. I'm really strong around it, but at the same time, have I done some of those, you know, joint rotations and built capacity to resist movement, you know what I mean? So yeah, if, you, yeah. if you can control the movement here, you can also resist the movement as you get put into it. So yeah. not only is it muscular strength, but it's that, that again, that step before, kind of that joint control, yeah. which allows your strength to really help you. Yeah, that, I've been doing like, a, like what I do, like when I do shoulder press, I, be, I do like the, the, what is it, the, what are they called, shoulder, yeah, shoulder cars? Press, yeah. I do shoulder, but man, those things are... They're, they're, they're not easy. It's tough. It's tough. Well, and, then, and, then, and then I come from like the, like, you know, like I said, the old school where it's like 10 to 12 reps. You're like, 
you, you can't do 10 to 12 rounds. You do it five. You're like, you do it if you do it properly. Uh, those standing hip cars we did, 10 of those. Yeah, you're done. You're like, you're gassing. But with that, you know, it's like for that, maybe I'm training a client and it's someone who's like, look, yeah, I want my hips to feel good. But at the same time, I care more about how I look. I'm just being honest, I want aesthetics. So it's like, all right, we're going to squat through aesthetics today because so you got to build strength in the legs, you know, help us shed body fat, all those good things. With it, maybe we're doing, you know, five really slow weighted shoulder cars. And you're getting kind of that heart rate and you're getting kind of all that stimulus, but at the same time, we're sneaking in. Right, that's, a, that, that's another thing I didn't realize. It's uh, like a, I got the same effect a little bit when I when I first started doing yoga. It's uh, Man, you, it elevates your heart rate quite oh, a bit. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it's challenging. You don't, yeah, you don't realize. It's like total body tension. We talk about a radiation in class, but yeah. it's, it's really, you know, it's not just the movement because you're trying to prevent the other movements. Right. So that comes from as I go through that motion, I'm trying not to turn my chest. I'm trying to really isolate. And it takes a ton of tension to the core, through everything around the body, you know, and really working everything not moving with the shoulder. Yeah, yeah. And, and we, you know, one of the things I've noticed now, like, I, I literally feel now my center. Like when I lift now, like if I'll be doing like 200 pound squat and I feel like, not that it's not heavy, but I feel like I can kind of almost walk around with the weight that I didn't have before. I felt like it was like the, all the tension was on my legs. There's a great quote by the, the guy who created FRC, his name is Dr. Andre Ospina, uh -huh. and he always talks about healthy joints make difficult movements easy. So it's like, look, like a squat is a challenging movement, a heavy squat is a challenging movement. If the hips can rotate and flex, if the ankles can dorsiflex, the spine can, you know, business flexion, if the joints all do those things really well, that's just strength now. But if we don't have joint mobility, now I'm asking my joints to do something they're bad at. They can resist all these, you know, weak points. And then my strength has to compensate for all those way. things. So, you know, if we don't have our joints at a certain point, are, are we actually using as much muscle as we have? Are we actually, like, able to recruit all those? You know what I mean? So yeah, that's why it's in the FRC is kind of first. Because when the joints do what they're supposed to, the body works really well. I never thought of it that way. It's, 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 it's amazing how it's changed, man. When yeah. I first started learning about the fitness, it's come it was, along. It's come it was, along. Yeah, it was yeah. learning. Yeah. About, it was about stabilizers. Oh, yeah. Learning about stabilizers. Yeah. Work on stabilizers, like uneven planes and stuff oh, yeah. like that, oh, which yeah. still helps. Yeah, for but sure. But this, this I feel is uh is much more effective, effective for like real life application. Right. So I not just only think when I first saw FRC, I was, I was recovering from my neck thing that I'd given myself trying to do one arm handstands. Crazy person. And I remember, you know, reading something. And I was, you know, I was doing like Kelly Strett and lacrosse balls and foam rolling and all this stuff. It was sort of helped you feel better for like an hour. It gets tight again. It's like, oh, I got foam roll again. You just fall into that constant kind of doing one then the next. Yeah. And I saw some guy, you know, one of the guys going through just this neck hard, neck rotation, and being like, hey, if your neck hurts move the neck and I'm like oh <laughs> whoa that makes sense you know and like it was the first time somebody had explained mobility in a simple way where it's like this is what a joint does can you do it and then I'm like oh wow mine looks terrible and hurts I probably have a bad neck and I should work on it like yeah I can relax muscles with you know soft tissue work and massage yeah, what, what, what does that actually train the movement that I can't do now that I've been getting more and more into this like like I kind of wean a little bit away from doing a lot of that like you were saying, the foam rolling and the, so, and the, and the massage. I mean, you'll go, I mean, you've got people who go both ways with this for sure. Uh -huh. um, me personally, I think I have like a negative connotation because I, I spent like a year like spending too much time foam rolling and like digging in my neck and like doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing soft tissue wise on your own if you're not an expert and I wasn't. Right. It's the personal trainer to lacrosse ball in my scalings and like <laughs> you can do some stuff. It's like, hey, my hands are tingling. I don't think that's good. That's not, that's not normal, yeah. Um, so I have a bit of a personal like, you know what, I'm going to move a bunch and see if stuff feels better. And for me, soft tissue works almost my personal last resort. Having said that, I have a lot of friends who use it kind of first and you know, you open up tissue and kind of do some hard foam rolling and then you do your mobility work right after. Right. You know, you almost create a window of opportunity with that soft tissue work. There's a little more flexibility, the joint moves a little more. Now we can train it. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you, so, there's so a way there, I think there's a way to do both. So kind of com uh, one complements the other. Right. I, I, I think so. I think for me though, I don't use it as much just because I'm like, you know what? Yeah, you had a bad experience. I had a bad experience. I don't mess with it anymore. I got you, I got you. Uh, uh, all right, man. Did you, did you want to do like some basic stuff or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, let's. We talked about the shoulder. So why don't we go through the shoulder a little bit? Um, um, which, is this the one you had the pec one? Is yeah. Need to see if we go overhead. Yeah. Or is this gonna be if we go overhead? See, will that be okay? Yeah. Okay. We only have to see like to your elbow. Okay. Is this cool? Yeah. Right. So you said this shoulder's been injured before? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah so here, here's a couple of things. So like I have, I'm, I'm from birth, okay. I have like a form, a deformed like sternum. Okay. My ribs on this side, no, my ribs on this side poke out. Okay. Where my ribs on this side don't poke out. Okay. So like for me, I've had like what, what reason why I got the felt benefit from this FRC thing is because like, yeah, what's happened now is like I feel like literally my, my whole core now tighten up. And I feel like actually my actual spine now. Well, it's actually, you know what? Given what you just said, I'm gonna pivot from the shoulder. And to me, that's actually a really good option to talk about breathing. So, mm -hmm. when we have like any kind of, you know, from birth something, mm -hmm. right? It, basically, the body just is forced to adapt. The body's gonna efficiently figure out how it needs to do whatever it needs to do around that issue. So, okay. you know, we're kind of here. The body's like, all right, this is where I'm at. How do I breathe? How do I move my shoulder? Okay. And then it learns compensation. So, that flared rib cage. You really commonly see with like a, a breath rebound. Maybe mm -hmm. when you breathe differently in the one rib cage than the other, maybe it's tough to move the nose and little things like that. Okay. So when we talk about feeling the core and centered and all those things, a lot of the breath work we do in class, to me it's that hard exhale. Yeah. Yeah. That explosive breath out to pull the rib cage down. Yeah. But a lot of you know, if we're here, now this shoulder has so much less kind of room to be safe. It's always put into that kind of raised position so for you maybe the benefit is getting that good breath work you know yoga is going to pack that as well yeah um and then maybe even just moving spine segmentation is packed house but doing that and getting this to come you know and it's always going to be where it is from, from birth right but yeah. for you any small incremental difference maybe you can help a little pack house help a little yeah now my shoulder has way less stress on it just because my spine is not right okay so really common you get people with ankles are like crazy limited. Right. Same idea, they're always like, I always ignore my ankles because it's so bad. No, for you, you need to tackle them every day. Any little difference you can make. Yes, it's funny, you got to do that. You got to do it. It's counterintuitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like, you got to go towards it. You got to go towards the pain. Embrace the suck and all that stuff. But, you know, everybody talks about like 100 burpees, embrace the suck. I'm like, no, like wiggle your toes. Your toes, By the way, that was really hard yeah. in class. <laughs> like, I could, I, I, could, I could have disconnected my big toe. Pick up your big toe and they're like, I don't know how to pick up my These big are my toe. My fingers, I think. I think it's my toe. Um, but it, you know, it's motor control. And okay. A lot of it, the same idea. Like what we'd probably find for you is maybe you could do hard exhales, and I see the shoulders really getting involved. Yeah, nice and slow. But what you should feel is the rib cage actually pulls down towards the waistband. The yeah, see, cage I, I not only feel it here, but I also feel yeah, oh yeah, on oh, this yeah. on this back side yeah. here. So to me, like we'll do expulsive breathing in class, where we just work on how much air can you blow out. We're trying to pull the rib cage down to the waistband, and then we'll train it in a bunch of positions. And we do it in something similar to your jiu maybe 99 year shin box. Okay. Maybe we sit in a squat and do explosive breathing. We train the body to be to use that type of breathing in all different scenarios. So when you're doing jits, you know, you learn that, oh wow, if I take a hard exhale, maybe I've got more tension here and protecting it. Yeah. So it's like the carryover is your practice. Because again, the brain's just efficient. Doing that. Yeah, you kind of you clicked something when I was uh, yeah. taking the we were seated with the, the feet out and we were doing the swimmers. Oh, the steps. Yeah, yeah the but it was like it, it made some sense because as I kind of went backwards, yeah. like I, I felt the tension oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. in my hips right. instead of my shoulders, right. and then all of a sudden I'm kind of doing one right. of these. So we see like oh wow, some and for jujitsu that's so important, right? Because we need to be using our shoulders when our hips are in the craziest positions imaginable. So yeah. We never, you know, it's great to move my shoulders standing, to do it in a bench press, to do it. In kind of yeah, but when, your, when, but when your leg is behind your head, yeah, right. But like when you when you're getting choked out, like you still have your shoulder. Back, right? It's got to carry over, so you got to train in a bunch of different scenarios. Okay, so you're saying work on my breathing, concentrate on exhaling. One of the good ones for you, and I'll often when we see like an imbalance on one side, uh -huh. we get you in a side plank. Okay, it's hard breathing in a side plank. Uh -huh. and you're gonna get so much tension to the oblique and core. That'll be a good one to work on. Okay, and then you may find that like as you do that, all of a sudden the hip and shoulder are moving differently. So then you start attacking the shoulder and hip motion after we kind of got that stuff. This, yeah. this thing on this so again, for you, any little bit of weight from there, now the shoulder and hip are going to move, you know, without as much strength. They don't have to work as hard. Yeah, but the, this this arm is uh, definitely like, it's off. Yeah, I mean, the body's going to adapt. Because, right? I, because... You know, the body, again, it's going gonna, it's gonna to learn. Right? Right. So if it's learned, hey, this is where I'm at, it's going to be like, you know what, this arm needs to be a little bent so I can do some movements. Yeah, because when I'm in the downward dog position, my yeah. my left arm gives out. Like it's yeah. it's not like gives out like where it just well, that part of the muscle is here. Yeah, that's gonna affect that. Yeah, yeah, it gasses out like yeah. I, like I have to stop. Yeah. 
give myself like a ten time, second break. Yeah, but it's not that easy. Oh, the rotation. The big one for you is actually making sure it's that like, humor is actually turning from the shoulder. Uh-huh. He talks about that a bunch in class. Some of the people who just the elbow and they come with my thighs in tight. Or you see like the shoulder hopping up and down and they right. come with effect tight. So it really is the shoulder actually turning. The shoulder rotation is that. So when we're training, it's the same idea with the hip too. If the humor is fine, so when okay. we're training, it's really about meditating on one movement at a time. And that's where that, that heart rate comes up and that irradiation and tension comes in. We're trying so hard to isolate one movement. You know, somebody always says to me, like, I'm at the gym. It doesn't work like I'm doing anything, but I'm profusely sweating. Yeah, because yeah, you're working really hard to do one thing. Yeah, the tennis ball thing, that helps too. Yeah, it makes, uh, put, it makes yeah, it a little... some kind of tactile feedback to enhance that tension. Yeah. Squeeze it or crush it in between your knee. But something that's less to think about. Like yeah, hold this real hard but, thing. Like, see, see this, on this side, the mobility is not bad. Like I can rotate down, down and around pretty good, yeah. but on this one, once I get to a, once I get to the top, I feel the pull right here, yeah. and then it's so like, really common with any shoulder injury. It's gonna really screw up shoulder internal rotation. Internal rotation that's where the bias of that turns in the uh, socket. Most history of like pec injuries stem from like this is a good example. Uh -huh. If I'm put in a position my shoulder can't rotate enough, uh -huh. something has to pop. That goes usually if that shoulder jumps forward, and so that the shoulder's maxed out, doesn't have any more scapula trying to kick in and help. That's not a good position to cut, right? So now all of a sudden, the position doesn't work, the muscle can't move. The so way it's improving this, more rotation, scap doesn't jump it forward. Maybe we still get injured, but less aggressive. So we're trying to mitigate the, you know, look, this is a crazy thing. You snap yeah, half. basically you're so trying to... You can snap in half like 50% less back. You get an extra like ten or fifteen degrees, and, oh, and I noticed yeah. it with that the black belt that I was uh, yeah. uh, that I trained with. He's, he knows the guy, and the guy, he moves like a cat. Oh, yeah. And you see him do certain things where you're like, "What? That's not normal." And he's able to kind of like he's got enough leg dexterity yeah. to kind of swing his leg around. I've been doing it for a long time. Yeah, he's been doing it since he was like a little kid. Yeah, <laughs> he's been doing it since he was like five years old. Yeah, yeah, he's been doing it for a little while. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so where do these guys find you, man? Yeah, so I'm Coach Zach Deck on Instagram. I have a class every Sunday, 11 a.m. over in Edgewater. And I have a class at 6 p.m. every Monday in Coconut Grove. Maybe not quite as pretty as you, but it's close. Still pretty nice. But uh, check me out, guys. Go through some King Session FRC. Cool. Turn the foot out, and then bend back. Good. Then do something. Go wide and Yeah, Take your hand wide and bend that the the torso is, guys, away from the left hand. It's on, it's on. Use the hands here. Just wedge yourself into the floor, press down with those hands. Again, exhale, work with the challenge. Most of us, pull that heel on the back. Good. 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 Next challenge, guys. Nice and slow. Focus on the exhale. Core engaged throughout, guys. Don't let go of that tension. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, you know what to do. Subscribe. Hit the button. Do the shit that you know you're supposed to do. We need followers. Uh, I want to kind of keep increasing the content, and we need you to spread the word. Hopefully other people can enjoy it as well. Uh, thanks for listening. Keep grinding.